Djoser might have been confident that the stepped pyramid would secure his place in the afterlife. But Djoser's descendant, Snefru, demanded a more advanced design. A pyramid with perfectly straight sides. His monument began as a tall stepped pyramid. Then the steps were filled in with limestone casing stones to create smooth sides. But at some point, the outer stones must have come crashing down. All that remains is the inner core we see today. We don't know when it collapsed. It could have been during his reign or maybe centuries after. It's possible that the design was so flawed that the entire project was abandoned. But it's more likely that construction was completed and that this was the first true straight-sided pyramid. While Egyptologists aren't sure if it fell during his lifetime, we do suspect that something about this pyramid didn't please Snefru. Because he began a second one a few miles south at Dashur. This new pyramid started out at an angle of about 54 degrees. But cracks in the burial chamber caused engineers to adjust the angle to 43 degrees for the remainder of the project, giving the pyramid this odd shape and a fitting name, the Bent Pyramid. Even though this pyramid has a change in angle, the surviving structure makes it clear that Snefru was again attempting to construct a smooth, straight-sided pyramid. I'm at the base of Snefru's bent pyramid, and you can see here the local limestone that's the core of this structure. Now, this pyramid is unusual because you have a tremendous amount of casing stone still attached. Because it's leaning in a little bit, it's almost locked into the structure. You can imagine when all of this was first put on, when limestone is first cut, it's bright white. So when this was first built, this thing would have been gleaming white in the sun. Snefru had built two giant pyramids, but the evidence suggests he wasn't satisfied with either. Snefru, perhaps one of the most driven builders Egypt has ever seen, built a third pyramid just over there. This time, Snefru constructed the entire pyramid at 43 degrees the same angle as the corrected top section of the Bent Pyramid. The result was the magnificent Red Pyramid. Snefru had finally done it. A flawless, straight-sided pyramid. But why was he obsessed with perfecting the pyramid shape we now associate with ancient Egypt? Was there a motivation beyond architectural excellence? The answer lies in the Egyptian religion. Near the ancient city of Thebes, there's a tomb built more than a thousand years after the Red Pyramid for a governor named Ramosa. Carved on the walls are images that show the importance of the sun in the Egyptian religion. So just look at this shape. At the very top, you have the solar disk. And coming out from that is light, the light of the sun. And it's coming out in rays, rays that come out at an angle. Each one ends in a human hand. And those hands hold sign of life and the sign of power. Sun equals life. If you look at this in two dimensions, it's angled out like a triangle. But in three dimensions, it could be very easily understood as a pyramid. In ancient Egypt, the sun god was believed to die and be reborn every day. The king was considered to be the offspring of the sun god, and his dead body was also thought to be reborn every day. Pyramids, stone representations of the sun and its power, were the mechanism for his rebirth. So for the Egyptian kings, the stakes were extremely high. They wanted a perfect pyramid to guarantee that this sacred daily cycle would continue.